Hey guys, so this is going to be a bit of a guided homework opportunity. So I'm going to record myself doing the homework and then I'm going to premiere it as a live YouTube video and ask you questions as you do it along with me. And you can sort of do it along with me live, real speed, and answer via the live chat. The first question from your homework is given. Triangle ABC has the following measures. Angle B is 36 degrees, angle C is 104 degrees, and side C is 12 units. Solve the triangle. What do we mean by solve the triangle? By solve the triangle, we mean to find all of the missing sides and all of the missing angles. Now, I'm obviously not going to draw this to scale. Um, I'm just using a ruler to make some straight edges. And I'm just going to draw myself a neat triangle. And the capital letters are A, B, C, so those represent what? Capital A, B, and C represent the vertices or the angles. Now if you wanted to draw yours the way I'm drawing mine, I'm going to put, um, I guess, A in my bottom left corner, B in the bottom right, and C up top. That means side C is 12, we'll go down here, 104 degrees is up there. 30 to 6 degrees goes right here. Now we're going to solve the triangle. That means we're finding all the missing sides and all the missing angles. I'm also going to go ahead and label a lowercase a and a lowercase b on this picture. Which letter will go right there? That should be a lowercase b. What letter should go right there? That should be a lowercase a. The lowercase letter you label for a side when you have a triangle like this one should be matching the capital letter diagonal opposite from it. So angle, side, they're a little pair. Now we're going to solve the triangle. So I'm going to write out my capital and lowercase letters for my angles and my sides in two columns side by side to get myself started and I'll write down the values I already have in this blue pen and then anything I find I'll switch to another color. Maybe I'll use um, orange or something. So I have 104, I have 36, and I have lowercase c and 12. Okay. Now, we had a few pieces of um, advice that were given in the lesson video. In the lesson video, there was something I asked you guys to do first, and it would make solving a problem like this easier. What was it that I asked you to do first? The first thing I asked you to do was to always find the third angle when you're given two of the three angles to start. Now, how do I find my third angle? You find your third angle by using the fact that all three angles should add up to 180 degrees. 36 plus 104 represents the B plus C. What is 36 plus 104? These two angles add up to 140 degrees. Since we have 180 degrees inside our, our triangle and 140 of those degrees are already taken, that means angle A has to have what measure? Angle A should have a measure of 40 degrees. That means we only have two things left to solve in this triangle. 
once we found our angle, what was the second thing I asked you to do in the advice I gave for the objective one lesson? Objective one, we solved angle, angle, side triangles, and we also solved angle, side, angle triangles. What was that second piece of advice? The second piece of advice was to identify which complete pair you had, which uppercase and lowercase letter duo was already completely figured out. And in this case, I have both angle C and side C. So I identify that I have both of the C values already figured out. That's phase two. From here, I'm going to use C and C in one of my proportions, in one of my fractions, and then I'll use either A or B in the other one. And from there, I'll solve. Now, let's say we wanted to solve for A first, side A. Which setup should I use? Should I use sine A over A equals sine C over C? Or should I use A over sine A equals C over sine C? Or does it not matter? First option, second option, the one on the left or the one on the right? I recommend that you use the one on the right because we're solving for a missing side. So it's much easier if we have that variable that we're looking for in, <clears throat> in the numerator. That doesn't mean you can't do it this way. It just means this way is going to be cleaner and more organized. So I'm going to use this to get my problem set up. So I'm just going to scribble this out for now. Now let's fill in what we have. A over sine 40 equals 12 over sine 104. Now I need to get lowercase alone. What do I need to do to get lowercase a alone? To get lowercase a alone, I need to Multiply both sides by sine 40. This is what I would refer to as an exact solution. What do I need to do to get the approximate solution? To get the approximate solution, I need to use my calculator and type this in. What do you get when you type this into your calculator? Round out to the second decimal place. So I want two um, decimal places, hundredths. You should have gotten 7.95. If you answer for the next one, say, um, after somebody else, obviously if you put what they put, then how am I supposed to know if you're being honest or not? So I'm going to ask that if somebody answers before you, that you go out one decimal place further than they did. And this shouldn't be a problem if you have the number on your calculator screen.
now all we have left to do is to find the length of side A, I'm sorry, the length of side B, and we're going to approach that exactly how we did this one right over here. I'm just going to switch to a different color so we don't get um, too messy. I'll set up B over sine B that I'm going to fill in right away. What am I going to fill in right over here? I'm going to fill in 36 degrees. Now, should I use the ratio with A's, the ratio with C's, or does it not matter? I did give some advice in the video lesson about this. Which one? A, C, or either? If you're able to answer, can you also tell me why? I suggested that you used the original pair because it's very precise and you didn't need to round. 7.95 is a rounded answer, so you won't get as precise of a B value if you use a value that's already been rounded. 12 over sine 104 degrees. Now, all I have left to do is to isolate B. What do I need to do to get B alone? I need to multiply both sides by sine of 36. And again, this over here is not my approximate solution. What kind of solution do I have written right now? What kind of a solution is this? This solution is your exact solution. We want our approximate solution. So I'm going to ask that you type this in your calculator. And for this answer, I would like you to, if you are the first to participate, go out one decimal place and everybody who puts an answer after, you put one more. However, I'm going to ask that on the worksheet, you write your answer out to three decimal places. So take a few seconds and I'll let everybody have a chance to type out an answer. And we should get for B, after all is said and done, B is 7.269-ish, 7.269-ish. And that's the end of problem one from your homework. Now, let's go and take a look at problem two from your homework. Use the provided diagram and measures to determine the length of segment DC. Now, you might need to take a few seconds to copy this down, but let's see if you can multitask a little bit. Here I have two triangles, and they are attached. They share a side. You're asked to figure this out. DC. If you're being asked to determine the length of DC, and this triangle that DC is on is attached to this triangle, ABC, chances are you need to figure something out from here before you can figure out your answer from there. That is just how it works. Now I'm given an angle, 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 angle. I have one, two, three, four angles. Really I have two per triangle, so I really have all of the angles. I have one side length here. That's enough for me to figure out more information. Now, normally I would write A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and just go from there. However, A and C are a little tricky because I have two angles at A and I have two angles at C. Because of that, I'm going to have to use three letters to represent 
each of the angle A's and three letters to represent each of the angle C's. So if I start with angle A, maybe I start with C, A, B. Angle C, A, B. Then I'm going to go around right here, angle B. I'm just going to use the angle symbol for everybody this time. Then this C inside of this triangle, which I can call B, C, A. You can also call it A, C, B. So angle B, C, A. From there, I'm going to go up to the next triangle. I'm going to do D, C, A. So angle D, I could just call angle D, nothing wrong with that. Angle C, I need three letters, so D, C, A. And angle A, 90 degree, is D, A, C. So those are all six of my angles. And now across from each of them, I'm going to name the sides. Now, here's the issue with the sides. I kind of run into the same problem. We should really name the sides by the segment, sort of like segment DC is named right over there. So I'm not going to write the word segment. That's silly. So I'm just going to put the um, little line segment above the letters. So C, A, B. What side is across from angle C, A, B? Name it alphabetically by its line segment. B, C should be your answer. What side is across from angle B in a triangle? Alphabetical order, capital letters as a line segment. You should have said A, C. Which segment or side is across from angle B, C, Segment A, B. Which segment is across from angle D in the triangle? Remember, you don't want to go across from angle D and jump to the other triangle. You want to stay in that triangle. We have A, C again. So we have it twice, and that is important. D, C, A. So what side, what segment is across from angle DCA. Let's go in alphabetical order so we mean everything the same. A, D. Probably should have done the alphabetical order thing for the angles too, so I'll try to remember that for next time. And what segment is across from angle D, A, C? C, D, or as the question asks, D, C. Okay, now let's fill in everything that was given. I'll keep using the same dark pen and then I'll switch colors for um, when we start finding new pieces. So angle C, A, B, I didn't have right away. I know we could figure it out, but Angle B is 108, that was already given. B, C, A, angle B, C, A was also already given. Angle D was already given, that was 58. Angle D, C, A, we don't have it right away. And angle D, A, C, we did have that it is a right angle at 90 degrees. And now we only have one line segment. We only have A, B. A, B was three centimeters. Now let's do the advice I gave to you guys. So let me start off in orange. The advice I gave you was to find the 
third angle. And we're going to be able to do that twice. So can you tell me what angle CAB should be? And could you also tell me what angle DCA should be? Angle CAB first. Angle CAB should have a measure of 40 degrees. How about angle DCA? And the DCA has a measure of 32 degrees. So we have a bit of a situation where these two angles are both 32 degrees. There are adjacent angles right next to each other, and they're both 32 degrees. Okay, next. Phase two. Phase one is done, I found out my third angle. Phase two, I just said phase two, is so look for what? Phase two is to look for a matching set, angle side um, pair. So we have that right over here. 32 degrees being across from three centimeters. Am I able to figure out another side fairly easily? If so, which side? Which side should I figure out next? The side I should figure out next is side AC because this side not only helps us complete the bottom triangle a little bit more, but really we can use the fact that I have more information in this bottom triangle to figure out something else, and then I use that value to help me out on my right triangle. So I'm going to figure out AC. What goes in the denominator of AC? If you said sine B or sine 108, you are correct. What should I use over here? My numerator should be what? My numerator should be three. How about my denominator? The denominator should be sine 32 degrees. What do I have to do next to get AC alone? To get AC alone, we need to multiply both sides by sine of 108. That means my exact answer is 3 sine 108 over sine 32. What do you get when you punch that in the calculator? For this worksheet, I'm going to ask that we round on paper to the hundredths place but on the calculator, you always leave the number nice and complete. So again, if you participate in the live chat, just start off with one decimal place and let anyone who comes after you add on one more when they type out their answer, they'll drop to two, to three, to four, and so on. Rounded out to two, we should have that AC equals approximately 5.38. 
but don't forget sine, or I'm sorry, AC is really on this list twice. That means I have more complete pairs. Now normally you are able to recycle the original pair and we didn't have to use our rounded answer. So we're really going to avoid using this rounded answer by leaving it on the calculator screen. If that's unavoidable, you will punch this whole thing in again when you need to plug in the value of AC if you really want to keep that answer precise. Now, our goal is to find the length of segment DC. Are we able to go right to that? Do we have to do another step first? What am I setting up for my next ratio? Tell me what I need to do. The best answer would be to use right triangle trigonometry. You don't need to use the law of sines to do this question. Since we have all three angles, and one of them is a 90 degree angle, we have a right triangle, we can use right triangle trig or Sokotoa. You shouldn't try to bust out law of sines on right triangle because it's a little silly and it's going to give you more to type than necessary. So I'm going to use the 58 degrees since that was given. Even though 32 is precise, I didn't have to round. Sine of 58. Probably should have asked you which trig function I should use, but that's okay. What do I use for my numerator and denominator? Sine of 58 degrees equals what over what? My numerator should be that approximate 5.38 number. And my denominator is DC, the side I'm looking for. How do I get DC alone? If you said to divide by 5.38, be in big trouble. We're going to multiply both sides by segment DC. And we'll also divide both sides by sine of 58. See, I'll turn this plus out. That reduced to a 1 into my new fraction bar. Look what I did there. DC equals, now, I still have that on my calculator screen. I'm going to divide by sine of 58 degrees. If I do that, what do I end up getting for DC? In the chat, you would share one decimal at a time, let somebody else go further. But for the final answer, I'm going to ask you round to the second decimal place to the hundreds. Your answer should be on your screen something along the lines of 6.34888. That means I'm writing down 6.35 as my approximation. This question didn't ask me to solve the triangles. It asked me to find the length of DC. So that right there is my answer. Let's take a look at the third and final question. Third question says solve the given angle side angle triangle. I'm going to write down D, E, F, and D, E, F. I'm also going to fill in the values I already know. So you should be doing the same. And then I'm going to prompt you with the same questions I have been asking. What should we find first? Not only what should we find, but what is it? We should find angle D first because whenever you have two out of three angles, you always find the third. 70 plus 40 
is how much? 70 and 40 is 110. My triangle is 180. That means that angle D is 70. What should I do next? If you said set up the law of sines using D and D as one of my ratios, you are a little tricked. Being that angle D and angle E are both 70, I have an isosceles triangle. So if this is 10 units long, then so is this. So that means E is 10 units long, and I don't need to use law of sines for that. Now I'm only going to use law of sines to figure out side F. Ten over sine seventy, and really, this doesn't matter if that's D or E because they're the same. Equals F over sine forty. How do I get lowercase F alone? Multiply both sides by sine forty. going to rewrite this a little bit, but that means F equals 10 sine 40 over sine 70. This is called what kind of a solution? This is our exact solution. However, if you want to find our approximate solution, and I'm going to ask that you round again out two decimal places, what do we get for side F after we use the calculator? You should get approximately 6.84. This is the end of your homework. Our next lesson will be learning angle side side ASS or SSA triangles and word problems. After law of sines, we'll move on to law of cosines. I hope you feel good about this and I look forward to our next lesson. Bye!